much indeed, Madam Deputy Speaker. Um, as an Essex boy, uh, James and I got on like a house on fire when we were both elected in 2005. Interestingly enough, as we became ministers together, we shared departments together, and I've listened very carefully to the fact that James got all the difficult bits <laughs> and the police minister didn't. Some of that was news to me, Madam Deputy Speaker. But he was, as we used to drive home in the car, we were both shadow ministers. We used to drive home and we were chewed to cut about many things as new members of parliament. James was a wonderful human being, but he was a family man. We talked invariably about family things on the way home. I knew that I'd have to move my daughters out of my school, their school in South End, to my new constituency in Hemel Hempstead. And he talked to me about how difficult that was going to be for me. And I apologised to Cathy. We sat outside your house many a time when I was dropping him off. And he didn't come in quite as soon as he should have done. Because <laughs> we did talk about other things as well, particularly his haircut. For those that didn't know James in his early days in this, he had a wonderful flat top and how carefully it was trimmed. We spent hours talking about this. So <laughs> people may think that men don't talk about that sort of thing, but we did. And we talked about our kids and we talked about you know, life in general as well as this greasy pole. When, when he went to Northern Ireland, he came back to me and said, you've been there, Mike, can I talk, take some advice from you? We've heard so much in this house about people taking advice from James, but he was a sponge. He wanted to listen to other people's experiences, whether in the constituency or as former ministers. He continued up that greasy pole, where some firemen like myself disappeared down <laughs> that greasy pole. But he was absolutely brilliant at putting his arm around you when you needed that five minutes. I phoned him a couple of weeks ago, before his sad death, and we chatted about the usual answer and bits and bobs. And I apologised for phoning him, because it was obvious so how poorly he was at that time. And he said, no, it's all right, mate. We're six boys together. We can have a chat. That was James, and I'm so proud to have known him for so long. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah.